Welcome to Cigar City Radio, episode number 31. I'm your host, Randy Ojeda, and with the first pick in the 2017 podcast draft, the man who's making the magic happen, Mr. Jason Solanez. I didn't I didn't know I'd be on, on the spot so much. Yeah, you're at this draft night, man. You gotta it's, gotta hold up that jersey, gotta bring your baby. I mean, I'll I'll bring somebody's baby. Oh, weird. This just yeah. took a, a a weird turn. Yeah, hey, uh who says it won't be mine, but it's somebody's. <sighs> so you're just stealing babies now? It could be mine. Okay. For more episodes, head to cigarcityradio.com or subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts. Stitcher, or whatever your favorite podcast app is. Just search for Cigar City Radio. You can also connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And on all those networks, our username is Cigar City Radio. Can't get enough Cigar City Radio? Go beyond the podcast by following the Cigar City Radio companion playlist on Spotify, a playlist filled with music featured and discussed on this show. We also have a brand new playlist called The Tampa Mixtape, filled with you guessed it, Tampa Music. Both of these playlists are updated regularly. Just search for our username Cigar City MGMT on Spotify and give these playlists a follow. Our guest on this episode is Muncie Girls from the UK. This is another band we caught up with during South by Southwest, and we had a blast meeting them. Their debut album, From Kaplan to Bell Size, made a splash last year, garnering inclusions on the AV Club's Best Music of 2016 So Far list. They made Stereo Gums 40 Best New Bands of 2016, and they were even nominated for Best British Newcomer at the Kerrang Awards. For tour dates, links, and more, head to munciegirls.co.uk. That's M-U-N-C-I-E girls.co.uk. So here it is, episode number 31. Are you from in the UK exactly? We're from Exeter. Okay. And kind of London and Brighton a bit. Mostly Exeter. <laughs> oh, right on. <laughs> right on. Cool. And you're here at South by Southwest enjoying uh, everything that Austin has to offer. Is this your first South by Southwest? Yeah. Uh, what have you what have you been up to so far? What have you gotten into? We've played two free shows so far. Mm-hmm. And apart from that, we've just been hanging out, watching some bands eating some good food and (laughs) napping and napping we've been sleeping a lot oh yeah yeah. we like really had to get over the jet lag it hit us hard oh yeah Um, and we're nearly there i think i reckon we'll get over the jet lag then we'll have to fly home yeah yeah it it Mm. usually takes like i don't know a few days yeah i'd say to really get into it i i I was in london a couple years ago actually and I to get over the jet lag, I just stayed awake for like forty something hours and then crashed. I think you that's know? the way yeah. to do that's it. That's the way to do it. <laughs> like, but you know, I was like, we were at like the Tower of London, and I was like seeing spots in the air. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> it was like, can't, I don't know if I can handle this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so that's awesome. So you're you're here for South by Southwest. Are you doing any other touring or anything while you guys are in the no, states? No, we just we're just literally here um, on like a PRS yeah, yeah. grant. So we're only playing like some. South by Southwest shows, and then we're not touring, but yeah. that's not, something we want to do. Yeah, we're not allowed to do anymore. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. I we mean, are government. forbidden. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean that's the big issue this year. There's been a like, you know, immigration's yeah, kind we of a were spotlight. Scared. We were really yeah. scared to do it. Yeah, but as long as you do it the right way, you know, it's like, and the thing is, like, the, those rules have kind of always been in place. It's just this yeah. year because you know our country is led by a giant orange monster mm-hmm. that we yeah. have to, you know, now <laughs> it's like the spotlight's really on that. You know, yeah. and it's a bummer for these bands that are getting turned away at the border and yeah. having rough issues. Oh, it's the worst! Like I can't even imagine how horrific that would be. Yeah, especially when you're coming here to do a fun, you know, play some shows, you know, get your get your name out there, and you just 
get stuck. That's horrible. Yeah. But luckily that didn't happen to you guys. So <laughs> we breezed through. You breezed through. Yeah, we sailed through. They were just through. like, oh, well, this is clearly Muncie girls. So, yeah. you know. They were Stand like, aside. Hello. <laughs> yeah, they were like, hello, friendly holiday makers. <laughs> and we like literally dressed up. Dean put a shirt on. Really? Yeah. Oh. We weren't taking any chances. No, you have they to. They let us walk right through. Yeah, you have to wear a shirt to, you know, through you immigration. Do. You do. Yeah, it's the law. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is literally the law. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried doing it without a shirt. Before. No, you it got doesn't arrested. work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worst night of your life. Yeah. <laughs> Is it the new album from Kaplan to Bell Size? It's a year old. Oh, a year but old. But it's now. our latest. It's the latest yeah, yeah. album. So it's the only album. Yeah. So you can't still call it new, is it? You could call it new. It's you call it yeah. what you like. Yeah. It's kind of like I used to work at Disney World, and people oh would Lord. people would come like six months later from after their birthday and be like, "I'm celebrating my birthday at Disney World," and I'm like, "Eh, your birthday was in June. It's yeah. December. I don't know if that really works." But I feel like albums are the same way. It's like until you yeah, get a new yeah, one, yeah, yeah. you can yeah. celebrate. You got to exactly. drag. You got to drag it out. So you're still touring under that album then is the, is the deal? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, like now we're just touring to tour. Yeah. Touring for the sake of touring. Um, but that's like what we sell at the merch desk. We're is, like, buy this, buy this. Yeah, yeah, is that album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. And uh, have you been working on new stuff? Is there some, yeah, some new music Yeah, we've coming? written a new album. Um, so we're just about to finish demoing it mm -hmm. um, and then record like in the summer. So that's going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost pretty much fully demoed. We're going back the week we get back from South by. We're finishing up all the demos and then we'll be ready to record number two. Oh, man. That's big. Mm. That's big. Mm. You're recording it's a it. big number two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but num number two is tough, though, because, you know, like everybody says that like your debut record is, uh, you know, I heard. Well, I heard that two's fine and three's hard because Number one is like all the songs that you've kind of ever written just or like the ideas and themes that you've ever collected over your life. And then that's easy. And then number two is kind of all the songs that didn't really make the cut or the kind of off cuts of those songs. <laughs> sure, and sure. that works kind of fine as well. But then once you get to number three, you've literally got nothing to write about <laughs> because in the year that you've had nothing's happened to you of note. <laughs> really? So say, say you write your first album when you're 21 or something. Sure. That's 21 years of material to be writing about. Sure. But yeah. then from, and then number two, what, what was that? That was the Off Cuts album. <laughs> then, so that's what we're about to go for. Oh no. But then, in the year from the Off Cuts to the third album, nothing's happened to you apart from like just touring Ending, and that's boring yeah. to write about no one wants to hear that so <laughs> that's why no one's third album is like the very good so appreciate this next album because uh, the one after that is going to be rubbish <laughs> according <laughs> according to the rules of albums <laughs> well, well at least you're at least you know yeah you we know, know. You're, we're ready for it you're yeah. ready, ready for, for that the rubbish that rubbish yeah. third album <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's wild no one wants to hear it anyway yeah so what's the scene like over where, where you're from it's great. It's cool. Yeah, like there's a lot of cool bands around at the moment and there have been, you know, from the time we started our band, there's been loads of cool bands, you know, in the punk rock scene. Uh, it's kind of where we started and where we mostly play our shows, you know, within this sort of punk rock community in the UK and Europe. And there's like loads of cool stuff going on, not just bands, but also promoters and just people dedicated to, you know, music or art it's yeah it's yeah. cool really it's good pretty diy you know For sure. people doing putting putting shows together i mean that's what the punk scene's all yeah, about it's right awesome. yeah. and recently like a bunch of our friends have started putting on like all dayers or like festivals i love that i yeah. love that term all day it's dayers. really cool yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean i yeah i kind of i'm in two minds about all dayers because some of them it's like absolute leg ache mm. and then sometimes it's just like the best party ever yeah but, i hate um, playing all dayers but I like going to them. Yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Unless we play early and then we can have a fun time and relax afterwards. Yeah, it's that's the waiting the around. Waiting around for like 10 bands to play before you yeah. sucks. Yeah, I hear that. We just th had a show last night. It was 14 bands, 3 p.m. to 2 a.m. And yeah, t towards the end, it was like, okay. We're, we're, we're still rocking, but it was, yeah. No one likes music that much. <laughs> well, we do, I guess. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. we did it. You know, but, uh, that's, it's that's, a stretch, though, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So so you you said you kind of got your roots in the punk scene, but the, I mean, you're not, your sound's not strictly punk, though. I mean, there's, there's no, more going on. I don't, 
I don't think that's like a relevant term these days anyway, because like punk rock like develops, I guess. And yeah. th- th- I guess there are bands that are like, you you can be really punk and not sound punk at all. And we're not that punk anyway. Yeah. I mean, we don't sound that punk, but we like punk. So yeah. that's why. So you just, they kind of fit you into that punk yeah, scene yeah, over yeah. there. We kind of slot ourselves in there because that's where we want to be, but. That's where you want to be, but yeah, you don't yeah. want to play that music. No, no, <laughs> we just like the atmosphere, you know? Yeah, the yeah. The punk vibes. Yeah. The punk nice rock people. Shows, nice people, yeah. Good clothes, but we don't want we don't want to like be playing the music. Yeah, nah, I joke. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you're just, you need more than three chords and stuff yeah, in there. We need well, four. Yeah. you need yeah. four. Yeah. <laughs> We've tried to sound cooler and it doesn't work, so we gave up and yeah. just went back yeah. to what we always sound like whenever we try and yeah. fail. Just doing your own thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So how did you? How did the band come together? How did you meet? Just when we were like in college, well, high school. I don't know, like 17 and um, just going to like punk rock shows and started this band. And then Luke joined like a year afterwards when you were at university. Did you? Yeah, we're all from the same town and it's a small town with a cool punk scene. So we all like grew up playing in bands that play at the same venues and all that sort of thing. Um, so I started filling in for these guys when I was playing in a different band. And then I just joined and then we here we are. Wow. As soon Three as you joined, we went on well, tour. Five years much. later, you, you, that, just right away. You just well, like, oh. you know, yeah. a couple of months later, <laughs> okay, yeah. the rest is history. Yeah. Uh, and have you toured the states at all, or no? The it's only time we've been was to play fest. Oh um, yeah, yeah, like two and a half in, in years Florida. Ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. In Gainesville, yeah. Florida. That's it like awesome. right. That's not far from where we're from. Really? Actually, cool. Tampa, Florida. Awesome. Yeah. Fest is like yeah. A we time, played. Man. We played pre-fest in Tampa. Oh yeah, yeah. Ebor. Pre-fest in Little yeah. Ebor. That's so cool. Big pre-fest in yeah. Little Ebor. Yeah. Is it really? We that's we're so cool. we're Cigar City Radio, and Ebor is the Cigar City. Awesome. You know, yeah. so we record like right next to a cigar factory that's funny. and all stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We played opposite the Scientology Church. Yeah. At New World Brewery. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, amazing venue really yeah it was really cool I sat there had a pbr in the sun and then uh played the show it was really fun that's one of our favorite venues to go yeah. to so when was that i can't believe we it missed was, it it was two and a half years ago so ah i was living in chicago at the time so ah. sorry guys sorry i missed it that's all right yeah <laughs> but that was like so much fun yeah but that was like one of my favorite memories i think as a band is us g- going over there it was really good and then we yeah, and then so this is kind of quite similar in a way. Yeah. Just like, but this is more shows, so it's kind of better in a way. But um, yeah, just coming over just for like festivals and just getting drunk <laughs> and just enjoying the weather. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Yeah, the weather here is lovely right now. Mm. So, mm. how many shows are you doing while you're in town? Five. Five shows. So just two more left today and tomorrow. We're playing oh, in a minute, in a bit. Yeah. In a couple hours. Oh, all right. Where are you playing at? Don't know. The, yeah, no wait, idea. I do. Waterloo cycles. What, yeah. Bike, bike shop. Oh, okay, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, should yeah. be fun. So, are there are there plans to do a more maybe a more of an extensive United States tour in the future? We, we want to. Yeah, we'll How, have to see if it's possible. Well, it's like it would be so cool. Yeah, we would really like to do that. I, our audience is responding to you guys here, or are they like, no, nah, get these Brits yeah. out of here? Yeah, they hate <laughs> us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. So it's hard to tell. Yeah, like, it's really yeah, hard to like tell. the shows have been great. There's been more people at the shows than we thought there would be, which is a good thing, I guess. So, like, hopefully at the end of this year, we want to come back and do a tour. It's just dependent on schedules and all that crap, the boring crap that goes with it. Yeah. Trying to work it out. Yeah. But plus, you know, like we said, like the immigration stuff, the yeah, visas, yeah. Yeah. and getting over here. It's a lot of work for We're a band. We're going to have to buy on. a really fancy shirt this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really like a piratey, like Seinfeld type shirt. Yeah. yeah. It's seriously ironed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, have you toured around Europe, though? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's your, what's your favorite place to play in Europe? Um, Definitely our favourites is Nuremberg in Germany. Yeah. Um, Because every time we go there, we just have the wildest, funnest time. Germany's nuts, man. Yeah. (laughs) Germany's awesome. It's the best place to play. It's really similar to England. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's like a home from home. Yeah. But then there are other places that are less comfortable. because they're less, you know, like home. And that's good as well. So we did like a whole French tour last summer. And... um, it was just so different 
because there's not as much English being spoken and sure um it's just a lot more difficult to kind of like make your way like just literally just to exist as an English person because they're not so like they don't like celebrate your Englishness <laughs> which is quite right like yeah. do you know what I mean like so I really liked it but it was just like pretty difficult and we had to actually learn some French rather than just speaking English really yeah. loudly at people. <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, I'm jealous of like people that are from Europe because, you know, you're close to so many different languages and different cultures. Yeah. Like when I was really in London uh, and I just ate at a cafe and they uh, handed me or they, they went to hand us the menu and they were like, what language would you like your menu in? And I was like, but what do you mean? What language? <laughs> like, yeah. like obviously English. Right. But yeah, it's yeah. because here, so here all we speak is American, you know, but yeah. oh, you <laughs> yeah. know, like, there's so many like different cultures and languages in Europe that that's, you know, it's yeah, yeah. it's great. It's like, I think it's, um, something I probably take for granted actually. Cause like when we tour in Europe, you know, we just drive, we drive to like the edge of England, which is only a couple hours away from where we're from. Mm. Get a ferry, which takes like an hour and a half, and then you're in another country. Also, yeah. the and you ferry drive like an incredible. hour, and you're in another country. So you can just do, you know, when we tour there, we just drive, and you can do like you know four or five countries in a few days, and all different languages, different cultures. It's different it's vibes. Really cool. Yeah, yeah. That's so. That, that's so awesome. Just going back to that ferry. That ferry is <laughs> yeah. so good. Tell me we about love the ferry. It. We absolutely love it get chips but like fries we always uh -huh. get chips on the ferry there's like a little restaurant on um, the ferry yeah yeah yeah. and we bring like our own like salt and vinegar do you know what i mean like yeah. a bit of ketchup bring our own tea bags <laughs> get some hot water and then just like have a nap and just <laughs> sail that sea we love to sail like honestly it's so liberating that's so and cool the english channel is only 22 miles so you're always like at the peace of mind where if it did sink it's not actually that far because if you if <laughs> you even, if, swim you, it, right? yeah. even <laughs> if you're right in the middle which is your most screwed point you can just swim 11 miles that's not actually that bad yeah <laughs> i mean i guess so it's like <laughs> it's literally like a little fun i wouldn't run. make it <laughs> you'd make it i don't think oh, i would no i can't well, life or death. All right, all right. Totally well, yeah, that. that's true. That's true. I get so that it's adrenaline. Super, there's no, you know, there's no risks involved whatsoever. It's just absolute. It's the high life. It's the super high chill. Yeah. It's so nice. <laughs> it's Unless it's choppy. Luke once threw up yeah. his chips. Oh, I had no. a horrible time on a ferry one. <laughs> what was she? What was the storm? Called? It was um, Storm Desmond. Yeah. Oh, and Desmond. And we were um, yeah. we had just done like a long tour in December, so it was like cold, and we'd been like all the way down to Slovenia. And this was the last day of the tour. We'd driven like all day and we were on the, um, on the ferry after like, I don't know, a 15 hour hung drive, over. hung over, tired. And it was like the worst ferry ever. It was like full of people, Des Storm choppy. Storm Desmond was absolutely merciless. And we were about half an hour away from getting back to England and like the ferry had to stop in the middle of the sea and we couldn't get in and it was choppy and there was just puke everywhere in the whole of the ferry. <laughs> Everyone oh. was throwing up and I just couldn't handle Children it anymore. Crying. And I, yeah. I just, I joined in. I got on the bandwagon yeah. and <laughs> I blew chunks. Threw those <laughs> chips right up, yeah. like turned into mashed potato. Uh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that's so <laughs> wild. Yeah, yeah, it was wild, the wild sea. Man. But I'm I'm jealous that you're able to go jealous to of some, that. No, not that specific. Such a weird time to say no, you're jealous. That is true. That is true. Bad timing on my part. I'm jealous of the fact that you can go to all these different places so easily. It is good. Know? Well, for now, yeah. we've just brexited. Oh no. Um, you know, well, yeah. we're about to Brexit, um, and that's just going to royally ruin everything. Yeah, mm. that's what I've heard. Mm. It's it's amazing that both of our countries had these like really awful election results in the in same one year yeah, in the one yeah in well, 2016 well, it, it makes the worst a lot of year. sense that they both happen though isn't it uh, i guess so you know a bit of a chain reaction i think yeah yeah i mean is is that something that's that comes up in your in your music and your lyrics well i think it's quite political yeah yeah and um yeah definitely i mean like it affects all of our lives so even if it wasn't like even if we didn't make an effort to make the songs about that it would come up yeah anyway because everyone, you know, unless you're like incredibly rich, you're basically going to be screwed over by this yeah. new government and new kind of rules and everything. So yeah, I mean, it's going to affect everybody in exactly. some way. Exactly. It's impossible yeah. not to. Th that's why I quite like 
bands from a certain era, like for example, from the 80s, even if they weren't political, maybe they came from like working class backgrounds or whatever, mm. they represent a political time in like England, say. Yeah. Just because that's how they, they grew up as a result of, if they grew up like under Margaret Thatcher, yeah. they're not gonna not represent that time and, and the effects that she had on the nation. So even if you don't want to write about it, you can't help it really. Yeah. But we, even like saying that, we do actually like write more about it quite a bit head on. Yeah. Do you feel like a certain responsibility too as artists to spread an awareness about certain social and political issues? No, I don't really think that, definitely don't feel like responsible, a responsibility because like not many bands do it. True. Um, but yeah, if you've got a platform, it's obviously good to try and spread messages, but. Yeah. We're definitely not one of those bands that thinks you have to, you know, like there's some people who think if you play in a band or if you're involved in some sort of art form, you have a responsibility. Personally, I don't think you have a responsibility. Do what you want to do at the end of the day. But if you feel strongly about something, then of course, talk about it yeah. and talk about it freely because you have that platform to do it, which is quite rare and it's quite a privilege to have to be able to, you know, get your views out there. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Especially, yeah, if you feel passionate about something, it reflects you and, and what you're doing. So you should put that in your music. Mm. Yeah, I believe that. Mm. So cool. So we're, we're about ready to wrap up. Uh, cool. any, any final words for our listeners? Anything you want to say to uh, the Cigar City Radio family that's out there? <laughs> I like Ebor. You like I've Ybor? been there and I like it. Well, we love Ebor and we love we'd love to have you in Ebor again. We'll be back. So. We sure. will yeah. return. Yeah. yeah. Whenever you come, hit us up. We'll do another one of these and follow up and see if you still love Ebor. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. we'll definitely make it out to that cool. show. So awesome. all right, enjoy your time here in Austin and South Thank by you. Southwest. Hopefully you get back through immigration safely. And <laughs> wear those wear those iron. Chunk. Yeah. <laughs> oh.